Hare Krishna, everyone. Thank you for joining this morning. Shivan Bhagavan class and attentive Japa. We'll uh, make a start and uh, happy Janamashtami to you all. And uh, let's carry on with that. Shivan Bhagavatam. Hare Krishna. So, we were talking about uh, Sati and Lord Shiva. And now, Sati has gone to her father's house <clears throat> and um, originally she saw everybody going to her father's house because there's a big yagya taking place. Uh, she was overwhelmed 
and uh, the emotions are taken over, mind are taken over. She wanted to go as well. She wanted to dress up nicely and go. But I think as she thought about it, she still went, but now she's thinking that, uh, you know, I need to sort out this situation one way or the other. So she's there now and will continue. So it says, it is not wonderful for persons who have accepted the transient material body as a self to engage always in dividing great souls. So Sati is speaking to Lord Shiva, uh, rather to her father, Daksh, and she's saying this, it is not wonderful for persons who have accepted the transient material body as the self to engage always in deriding great souls, which is Shiva. Such envy on the part of materialistic persons is very good because that is the way they fall down. They are diminished by the dust of the feet of great personalities. Everything depends on the strength of the recipient. For example, due to the scorching sunshine, many vegetables and flowers dry up. So she's giving an example of the sunshine is there, many vegetables and flowers dry up, but yet many grow luxuriantly. So it depends on the vegetables and flower, how strong they are. Uh, you know, what happens to them? The sunshine is there. Thus, it is a recipient that causes growth and the dwindling. So we cannot blame God or we can blame exalted devotees. It is our tolerance, our strength, our state of mind, our purity of consciousness that decides how we come out of the stronger or weaker. Similarly, the dust of the lotus feet of great personalities offers all good to the recipient, but at the same time, dust can also do harm. Those who are offenders at the lotus feet of a great personality dry up, their godly qualities diminish. A great soul may forgive offenses, but Krishna does not excuse offenses to the dust of that great soul's feet. Just as one can tolerate the scorching sunshine on one's head, <clears throat> but cannot tolerate the scorching sunshine on one's feet. An offender glides down more and more, therefore he naturally continues to commit offenses at the feet of the great soul. Offenses are generally committed by persons who are false, falsely identify with the impermanent body. Because then you become envious, you become greedy, you become angry with you, identifying with your body. King Daksh was deeply engrossed in a misconception because he identified the body with the soul. He offended the lotus feet of Lord Shiva because he thought that his body, being the father of the body of Sati, was superior to Lord Shiva's because he was his son-in-law. <clears throat> Generally, less intelligent men misidentify in that way and they act in the bodily concept of life. Thus, they are subject to commit more and more offenses at the lotus feet of great souls. One who has such a concept, concept of life is considered to be in the class of animals like cows and asses. So let's do a prayer. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Mukham Karuti Vachalam Pangum Lam Yate Garim Yat Kirpata Mahamande Shri Guru Deen Taranam Param Ananda Madhvam Shri Chitanya Ishram Hari Om Tassat Narayana Namaskritya Naram Cheva Narotamam Devim Saswati Vyasam Tato Je Jemadiriyat Nashta Presha Vabdureshu Nittam Bhagavad Sevya Bhagavati Uttam Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Nestiki Hare Krishna. So now Sati continues. She's uh, going to tell how Lord Shiva is, how, how he's so great that you, know, you are making a mistake by treating him like an inferior person. Sati continues. My dear father, you are committing the great offense by envying Lord Shiva, whose very name consisting of two syllables, she and va, purifies one of all sinful activities. His order is never neglected. Lord Shiva is always pure, and no one but you envies him. Since Lord Shiva is the greatest soul among the living entities within 
this material world, his name, Shiva, is very auspicious for persons who identify the body with the soul. If such persons take shelter of Lord Shiva, gradually they will understand they are not the material body, but a spirit soul. Shiva means mangal or auspicious. Within the body, the soul is auspicious, aham brahmam brahamsi, or brahm asmi. I am Brahman. This realization is auspicious. As long as one does not realize his identity as a soul, so I am Brahman means I am a spirit soul, not that I am Brahman or I'm God. It means I'm a spirit soul or I'm spiritual. Whatever he does is in auspicious. Shiva means auspicious. And devotees of Lord Shiva gradually come to the platform of spiritual identification. But that is not all. Auspicious life begins from the point of spiritual identification. But there are still more duties. One has to understand one's relationship with the Supreme Soul. If one is actually a devotee of Lord Shiva, he comes to the platform of spiritual realization. But if he's not intelligent enough, then he stops at that point, only realizing that his spirit, soul, aham, brahm, asmi. So just realizing your spirit soul is not enough. What, what does it mean? <clears throat> if you realize your spirit soul, then that's then that realization means now that you have some duties as a spirit soul. So unless you're doing those duties as a spirit soul, just realizing something doesn't mean anything. If he's intelligent enough, however, he should continue to act in a way of Lord Shiva. For Lord Shiva is always absorbed in the thought of Vasudev. Lord Shiva is always in meditation on the lotus feet of us there, Sri Krishna. Thus, the auspicious position of Lord Shiva is realized if one takes the worship of Vishnu. Because Lord Shiva says in the Shiv Puran that the topmost worship is worship of Lord Vishnu. Lord Shiva is worshipped because he is the greatest devotee of Lord Vishnu. One should not, however, make the mistake of considering Lord Shiva and Lord Vishnu to be on the same level. So, although Lord Shiva is exalted, this is Prabhupada explaining that although Lord Shiva is very exalted, is, or Lord Brahma is very exalted, they're still not on the level of Vishnu or Krishna or Narayan. <clears throat> One should not, however, make the mistake. There is also an atheistic idea now, that is an artistic idea that if you think Lord Shiva, Lord Brahma, and Lord Krishna are on the same level. It is also enjoined in the Vaishnavya Puran that Vishnu or Narayan is the exalted supreme personality of Godhead and no one should be compared to him as equal. Even Lord Shiva or Lord Brahma, not to speak of other demigods, because there's this uh, misconception, some people think that uh, God is the, God equals all the different demigods. And so the God is like, is, is uh, portraying himself through all the different demigods and they're all God, they're all powerful as, 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 uh, as God. But uh, it says here that that is not the case. <clears throat> you are envious of Lord Shiva, who is the friend of all living entities within the three worlds. For the common man, he fulfills all desires. And because of the engagement in thinking of his lotus feet, he also blesses higher personalities who are seeking after Brahm Anand or transcendental bliss. Ordinarily, there are two classes of men. One class who are grossly materialistic, one material prosperity and their desires are fulfilled if they worship Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva being very quickly satisfies, satisfied, satisfies the material desires of the common man very quickly. Therefore, it is seen that ordinary men are very much apt to worship him. Next, those who are disgusted or frustrated with the materialistic way of life worship Lord Shiva to attain salvation which entails freedom from material identification. One who understands that he is not the material body, but his spirit soul is liberated from ignorance, Lord Shiva also offers that facility. People generally practice religion for economic development. That is the, 
people worship demigods for material reasons uh, reasons a lot of times they want something get some money so by getting money they can satisfy their senses but when they are frustrated they want spiritual brahmanand or merging into the supreme these four principles of material life religion economic development sense gratification and finally liberation exist and lord shiva is a friend for both the ordinary man and the man who is elevated in spiritual knowledge so it was not good for daksh to create enmity towards him even vaishnavas who are above both the ordinary and the elevated man in this world also worship lord shiva as the greatest vaishnava this is why we worship shiva because he is the greatest vaishnava thus he is a friend of everyone the common man the elevated man and the devotees of the lord so no one should disrespect or create enmity towards lord shiva so we have to respect all the demigods in fact not just shiva all the demigods we should give them lots of respect <clears throat> do you think that greater more respectable personalities than you this is now sati saying to daksh such as lord brahma don't know this in a suspicious person who give who goes under the name of lord shiva he associated with the demons in the crematorium his locks of hair are scattered all over his body so she's saying that you think uh, he's the, in in a suspicious if he's an suspicious doesn't other people know doesn't lord brahma know that uh, because you are thinking he's an suspicious for these reasons he associates with demons in the crematorium his locks of hair are scattered all over his body and he's garlanded with human skulls and smeared with ashes from the crematorium but in spite of all these inauspicious qualities great personality like brahma honor him by accepting the flowers offered to his lord feet and place them with the great respect on their heads so you know if he is that inauspicious then how come he is still worshiped it is useless to condemn a great personality like lord shiva and this is being stated by his wife sati to establish the supremacy of a husband first he said you call lord shiva in a species because he associated with demons and crematoriums covers his body with ashes of the dead and garlands himself with the skulls of human beings you have shown so many defects you have so many defects but you don't know that his position is always transcendental all the ayupis in a species why do person like brahma respect the dust of his lotus feet and place on their heads with great respect those very garlands which are condemned by you since sati was a chast woman and the wife of lord shiva it was oh it was her duty to establish the elevated position of lord shiva not only by sentiment but by facts which is giving now to showing that look how exalted lord shiva is and here's the reasons lord shiva is not an ordinary living entity this is a conclusion of vedic scripture he is neither on the level of supreme person of god nor on the level of ordinary living entity so he is in between living entity and god brahma is in almost all cases an ordinary living entity he is the original father the man the the original uh, <clears throat> not personally god but personality of the humans sometimes when there is no ordinary living entity available the post of brahma is occupied by an expansion of lord vishnu but generally this post is occupied by a, occupied by a greatly pious living entity within this universe so only person can become lord brahma any of us can become lord brahma if we are pious or greatly pious and some of us may have even become lord brahma in the past we don't know thus lord shiva's position is constitutionally higher than that of lord brahma all the lord shiva appeared as son of brahma <clears throat> so is lord shiva is higher than lord brahma he says yeah even though he is come as his son here it is mentioned that even personalities like brahma except the so called in auspicious flowers and the dust of lord sweet of lord shiva grace sage like mrichi atri brigu and the others among the nine great sages sages who are descendants of brahma also respect lord shiva in such a way because they all know that shiva is not 
an ordinary living entity. So in many Puranas, it is sometimes certain that a demigod is elevated to such a high position that is almost an equal with the Supreme Person Godhead. But the conclusion that Lord Vishnu is the Supreme is confirmed in every scripture. <clears throat> it's like Lord Shiva is described in the Brahma Samhita to be like curd or yogurt. Curd is not different from milk since milk is transformed into curd. In one sense, curd is also milk. Similarly, Lord Shiva is in one sense the Supreme Personality God, but in another sense, he is not. Just as curd is milk, although we have to distinguish between the two, these descriptions are in the Vedic literature. So Shiva is like uh, yogurt and Supreme Personality Narayan is like milk, although the yogurt is comes from milk, but it is no longer milk or it is not ma actually milk, not treated as milk. Whenever we find that a demigod occupies a position apparently more elevated than that of the Supreme Personality Godhead, it is just to draw the devoted attention to that particular demigod. It is also stated in the Bhagavad Gita that if one wants to worship a particular demigod, the Supreme Person of Godhead who is sitting in everyone's heart gives one greater and greater attachment for that demigod uh, so that one may be elevated to the demigod's abode. Yanti Deva Vritta Devan. So by worship demigods, one can elevate himself to the abodes of demigods. Similarly, by worshiping the Supreme Person of Godhead, one can be elevated to the spiritual kingdom. So all paths don't lead to the same destination. Whatever you're worshiping, that's the gradation of your worship, of your motivation, of, of the vibrancy of your worship. And that's the, that'll be your destination. Whoever you're worshiping, that's where you will go. If you worship your pitters, then you'll go to the planet of your pitters. Or if you worship any demigod, you will go into the planet of the demigods. By worshipping the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one can be elevated to the spiritual kingdom. This is stated in different places in Vedic literature. Here, Lord Shiva is praised by Sati, partially due to her personal respect for Lord Shiva, since he is her husband, and partially due to his exalted position, which exceeds that of ordinary living entities. So, Sati is... Uh, <clears throat> establishing his supremacy, one, because he's a husband, but also because he is that, and she's showing by fact, yes, he really is supreme. Lord Brahma, uh, the position of Lord Shiva is accepted by Lord Brahma, so Daksh, Sati's father, should also recognize him. That was the point of Sati's statement. She did not actually come to her father's house to participate in the function. So she was thinking originally she wants to go to participate, but then she had decided, well, I will go. And although before coming, she pleaded with her husband that she wanted to see her sisters and her mother, there was a plea only for actually at heart, she maintained the idea that she would convince her father, Daksh, that it was useless to continue being envious of Lord Shiva. So that's, that was her final motivation to come and sort out this matter once and for all. That was her main purpose. When she was unable to convince her father, she gave up the body he had given her, as will be seen in the, as we proceed in the verses, or next week, which we shall see. And yet Sati continues, if one hears an irresponsible person blaspheme the master and control of religion, one should block his ears and go away if unable to punish him. But if one is able to kill, then one should be forced <coughs> by force, cut out the blasphemer's tongue and kill the offender. And after that, one should give up his own life. <coughs> this, the argument offered by Sati is that a person who vilifies a great personality is the lowest of all creatures. But by the same argument, Daksh could, be, could also defend himself by saying that since he was a Pajapati, the master of many living creatures and one of the great of officers of the great universe of face, his position was so exalted that Sati should accept his good quality instead of vilifying him. 
the answer to that argument is that sati was not vilifying but defending if possible she should have cut out the kshish tongue because he blasphemed lord shiva in other words since lord shiva is the protector of religion a person who vilifies him should be killed at once and after killing such a person one should give up one's life I don't recommend that but uh, that's what it says <clears throat> that is a process by but because dutch happened to be the father of sati she decided not to kill him but to give up her own life in order to compensate for the great sin she had committed by hearing blasphemy of lord shiva if one is a Bra brahman he should not give up his body now it says here after telling you know giving up your body etc now it's mentioned that if one is a brahman he should not give up his body because by doing so he would be responsible for killing a brahman so even if, if you are a brahman and you and you commit suicide then you are charged for for the murder of a brahman <laughs> therefore brahman should leave the place or block his ears so that he will not hear the blasphemy and that's the you know general recommendation that if somebody is blaspheming a, a vaishnav that you just leave that place and not continue with the conversation if one happens to be a kshatriya he has a power to punish any man therefore a kshatriya should at once cut the, out the tongue of the vilifier and kill him but as far as the vaishyas and shudras are concerned they should immediately give up their bodies so they decided to give up her body because she thought herself to be among the shudras and vaishyas as stated in bhagavad gita istriya vaishyas tatha shudra women laborers and mercantile class are on the same level thus since it is recommended that vaishyas and shudras should immediately give up their bodies upon hearing blasphemy of an exalted person like lord shiva she decided to give up her life <clears throat> so this is the past time of sati and uh, there will be more next friday and uh, it's getting uh, it's getting quite intense now uh, the point has now got to so um, anyway <laughs> want to hear your views on this um, thank you for joining uh, heena mata ji madhav shamsundar prabhu partha prabhu parin mata ji and venkat prabhu thank you for joining we can start at the top of the list uh, heena mata ji would you like to make any comments or any realizations you get from this or any questions you would like to ask mata ji hey krishna prabhu please accept my humble obeisances all glories to prabhu pad uh, thank you so much for the for the reading prabhu this morning um yeah i guess my thoughts it is really just comments and thoughts really more than questions at, at this stage for me um but uh yeah i just yeah like i think i mentioned last week as well it's just very inspiring and uh, inspire inspir inspir inspiring in terms of where in terms of sati's behavior obviously she's trying to now defend her husband um at this stage i think she's already kind of decided in her own mind what she's going to do she's going to you know take her own take her own life um and um yeah because in, in terms of because of what she's heard um as 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 almost like a tapasya or as her as her what's the word punishment you could say um so yeah i i think it is it's very inspiring but and i think it's almost like it shows her moral strength as well she is doing it she shows her definitely shows her moral strength because she could have walked away at that stage she could have listened to it and then turned around and walked straight back to shiva she could have she could have done that but she didn't she she you know she put a stake in the ground she she decided she's not going to tolerate this and she's going to demonstrate that like loyalty and her 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 morals there in front of everybody uh, and make a point about this and i think that sets a really good example for us vision of us as well in terms of like if we do hear anything blasphemous obviously we're not going to try and kill ourselves but we will stand up we'll correct <laughs> we'll correct the matter um and not tolerate it at all and i think that's what i think that for me is the learning thank you babu thank you so much mata ji yeah she was doing partly because he was the husband <clears throat> and uh, partly because he was exalted devotee and 
and he was she felt that it was unjustified for her father to treat him like this thank you so much for that partha prabhu hari krishna prabhu hari krishna prabhu ji and happy janmashtami to everyone um i have no more no, not much points prabhu ji but i i like the point shared by hina mata ji uh, that's all thank you prabhu prabhu mata ji hari krishna prabhu ji dhanwat pranam to everyone and happy janmashtami uh, today i'm in the mood it's krishna's birthday so very happy and a very nice past times and hina mata ji she's made all the points and the other thing i just wanted to say although the woman is considered weak but sati she stood up against her father you know the person a girl loves the most and for her husband she stood up for the right reasons for her husband's respect so which is a good learning that we have to stand up for the right reasons it doesn't matter who they are whether your mother or father so yeah thank you so much prabhu ji sure thank you so much. yeah but uh, you know in the end it cost her her life so this is the i mean we we'll probably understand more next week but uh, she stood up for her husband and for what is right but it has cost her, her life and it called a lot of grief uh, for lord shiva as well and for her family so mm, so it's interesting uh, because she wanted to make a point but uh, it was a very costly point at that and um, actually i would like to know next week uh, <laughs> so what's the outcome I mean, obviously we know the outcome and you know you have so many teeth stands and it's like a past time and uh, you know so so much came out of that and um, so yeah we'll continue that next week so anyway if there's no other comments uh, we'll uh, we'll do a couple of rounds today and maybe uh prabhu mata ji you can do the first one and partha prabhu second one is okay yes prabhu ji very well yeah.